Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope that everybody is uh, having a great week. I hope that to this point you are achieving or getting what you want. Um, as far as your goals, as far as your aspirations, uh, remember, uh, I often say that um, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. And that is so important when you are assessing your current state because it can you can become you can easily become uh, disenfranchised, frustrated, uh, angry, bitter because things aren't moving or going the way that you want them to go. You got to understand. Actually, that's part for the course. It's called adversity. Adversity is the fertile soil in which the seeds of faith are planted and cultivated. If there is no adversity, if there are, there are no challenges, that can be no character building. That can be no uh, spiritual strength and emotional fortitude developed. It's all developed in the uh, conduit of challenge and adversity. So we don't we don't we don't shake and tremble. Uh, in the midst of adversity, we anchor ourselves and our faith in our uh, supreme source of strength, uh, God, uh, however you see God is your business, but that supreme source of strength and faith in ourselves, our purpose, our capacity and our potential. Uh, that's where it begins. If you haven't developed that yet, then that has to be developed. I want to encourage you to be uh, the best you can be and understand that we don't get what we want in this life. We get who we are and what we become. So I can want something all day long. I can say it all day. I can quote it. I can put it in affirmations. And don't get me wrong. Affirmations and self-talk are extremely important. Uh, they have a massive impact on the subconscious. They have a massive impact on thinking. They have a massive impact on the establishing and reinforcement or the shifting of beliefs. So how we talk to ourselves about ourselves and what we speak and claim into existence are important. But remember, there's no uh, reward of faith without there being works of faith. In other words, uh, for those who are Christians, you've heard it a million times. Faith without works, faith, faith without works is dead. What does it mean? It means that that old saying that we tend to say a lot to convince ourselves uh, that we are going to get what we want, regardless of where we're at and what we're doing, you know, that if it's for me, it's for me. Uh, you got to be real careful with that statement. If it's if, if it's for me, it's for me uh, statement, uh, because it's if it's for me, it's for me, if should be the statement. If it's for me, it's for me, if I seize it. Because what you have to understand is that opportunity is like a window, but this window doesn't remain open. That opportunities have windows that close. So if you're inactive, and that's why I'm here to talk to you today, if you're inactive and you're not currently doing the things you need to do to become the person you need to become, it doesn't matter how much you wish for it. It's never going to happen. And it doesn't matter if it's for you. There are things that you have to do. There's your purpose. There's your destiny. But there is work that you have to do on this side of your purpose and destiny that guarantees the flow of it and the results of it and the fruit of it. But it comes with you understanding that I can't sit inactive and really, truly uh, thrive in this life, really, truly uh, achieve my ultimate purpose, my ultimate goals, and do the things that I say I want to do in life. I have to understand that if I'm going to excel, then I'm going to have to be proactive in the process. I'm going to have to willfully and consistently engage uh, those things that sometimes are inconvenient, uh, sometimes dis uh, uncomfortable, sometimes frustrating, and uh, annoying, but it's a requirement in order for me to fulfill that which I say I want. I don't get it just because I want it. I get it because I become it. In other words, anything that you want, if you become the person that's capable of producing it by way of financial means, by way of 
charisma, by way of knowledge and connectivity, whatever it is, you've got to be that person. When you become that person, the doors open up. When you become that person, you start to attract the right people. When you become that person, there's no force in front of you that can stop you. But if you're not that person, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to make it happen. It's not about wishful thinking. It's about activity based on what you believe about yourself and God. And so you're going to have to, at some point, come to a point. I tell people all the time that procrastination is the thief of time, but it is also the thief of opportunities. Why? Because the windows of opportunity close. They're only there for a moment and then they close. And once they're closed, they're gone. And then you've got to sit up and you've got to work and you've got to wait for the opportunity to open again. But by that time, you've wasted time and you've lost time and you're behind. And, and, and you got to understand the value of that time. You got to understand the value. What, what, what is it you're going after? What is it you want? How fast and how soon do you want it? How committed are you to it? Well, then you've got to put in the work. You can't sit around because something's uncomfortable. Um, um, I'm excited because I've expanded the uh, Breaking the Curse of Procrastination course to include a 10 week uh extended course which i think is immensely important for a lot of you plastic procrastinators because procrastination has become such uh an immense part of your life that it's literally ingrained into you your psyche it's inculcated into your psyche at a level that it literally guards your function you have literally become uh astute to the uh i mean ingenious ways of putting off things that need to be done today for the next day and it ends up being a perpetual cycle or something that should have been done a month ago still hasn't been done. Why? And there are a bunch of different reasons why. Now, some people ask me, does procrastination mean that I'm lazy? Uh, actually, procrastination and laziness are not um, synonymous. Uh, they are not one and the same. Uh, when you find a procrastinator, procrastinators tend to be active, but they're not, <coughs> excuse me, they're not active in the things that they should be doing. What normally, normally what procrastinators do is they replace tasks that they find arduous or, or un, uh, uncomfortable or troubling or they just don't like doing. They replace them with other activities. One of the things on the list is those people who tend to fill their days with low priority tasks because they're easy to do. So at the end of the day, they got all these things checked out. They did a whole bunch of stuff, but the things that were really weighty and should have been done wasn't done. One of the things that I teach my clients uh, when it comes to dealing with procrastination is the things that have the greatest impact in your day. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how uh, challenging they may be. You do them first. So your, your morning may be filled with just doing two tasks. You may have 15 other tasks on, on your plate, but the two you did will get you further than doing the other 15. But see, doing the other 15 gives you a false sense of accomplishment. See, if I look at my tasks and I did 15 out of 17, but the two you didn't do were the ones that you should have done first. And that's a form of procrastination. See, the thing, you know, the things that you need to do, you know, the things you need to advance, you know, the things that you're sitting up here looking, man, I sure hate them. I don't really feel like dealing with that today. You know what? I'm going to go over here and do this. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Now, you have to also understand that sometimes there's a need to put something off in order to get something done. That's not procrastination. If the need to put something off is really truly justified in order to get something that would normally not be on your plate done so that it's no longer there and it doesn't create a more intense issue or problem, then that's not procrastination. Procrastination is that thing. You know the things you're procrastinating on. Some of you have been talking about joining the gym for the last three months. It's real simple. Go down and join the gym. But you'll find a bunch of different reasons. Some of you uh, wait to the last minute to do your taxes. All these different things are just some of the things that happen. But what about the reading you're supposed to do every day that you told yourself you were going to do? Because you know reading is a big part of success. You know that you've seen somewhere, you heard someone say, probably me, that uh, the average person in America only reads one book a year and the most successful people, uh, the top five, uh, uh, most top five percent of the most successful people in this country read a minimum of four books per month. And so you understand you need to be reading. 
So you got this thing. You got even got your book list sit down. You know, you're good at planning what you should be doing, but you're not following through on it because sitting out and reading calls for you to be committed to doing something that you haven't grown com comfortable with. Here's the beautiful thing about something as simple as reading. Once you start to tackle it, the more you are consistent with it and, and, and to the point where it becomes a habit where you're literally going to grab that book every time you sit down at a certain period in time in the day and you're going to start reading. Actually, what it, it becomes a passion, it becomes a love, it becomes something you embrace, it becomes easier as you do it, as with anything else. Things that you don't like doing are probably because you're not good at it, or you, you it doesn't come easy, and that's because you haven't been doing it. You're going to have to start doing the things that you need to do in order to accomplish the things that you say you want. There's no side place, there's always going to be a pr process that precedes the prize, a process that precedes the promise. You're never going to obtain the prize or the promise without first enduring the process. And we don't like process. That's a part of procrastination. But you've got to stop allowing procrastination to rob you of these awesome things that are laying out in front of you as a part of your destiny. Those things that will only come to fruition if you seize the opportunity. So you're going to have to wake up to it. I, 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 I'm going to uh, put a few things out in front of you. And if you do at least one or two of these consistently, there's a good chance that you are a procrastinator. Everybody procrastinates every now and then. But if that's a practice that you have of avoiding doing things that you don't want to do, then you are a procrastinator. Uh, filling your day with low priority tasks. I already mentioned that. That means you got a bunch of stuff on your to-do list uh, that will fill your day and, and, and stop you from doing what you really need to do. Then that's uh, leave an item on your to-do list for a long time, even though it's important. You know it's important. You see it there every day, but you keep moving it on the calendar over to the next day, over to the next day, over to the next day. And you got all this stuff. You justify better. I got this to do. I got that to do. I can't do it today. I'm just going to put it over. I'll get it to it. I, I'm, I'm really going to get to it tomorrow. If you told yourself that, if you told yourself that about a particular task more than twice, you are a procrastinator. I'm going to get to it. I'm really going to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day. And you don't do it, procrastinator. Uh, read email several times over without making a decision on what you're going to do about them. Look at it. One of the ways that uh, I, I tell my clients to deal with procrastination, when it arises, deal with it then. If you, it, 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 the only way you don't deal with it then is if it's going to require something that you don't necessarily have right now. But the moment you have it, you deal with it. You deal with the things that have the high priority as quickly as you possibly can. It creates momentum in your workflow. It creates momentum in your mental engagement. It creates momentum in your overall Excel um, uh, capacity to excel. Um, another thing, start high priority high priority tasks and then go off and make coffee and do something else and get sidetracked. Oh, the sidetrack procrastinator. Get started, get distracted, off on something that has absolutely no true bearing on what really needs to be done and what really is going to move you forward in what it is you say you're going to do. Uh, that's a big one. Fill your time with unimportant tasks that other people ask you to do instead of getting on with the important task already on your list. Oh, you know, hey, look, somebody say, can you do this for me? Sure. Uh, no. You need to be aware of what you need to do. You need to be aware of what's important and you need to be able to say to them, no, I cannot do that for you right now. I have some things on my desk that I have to get done. I have some things on my to-do list that have to get done. I've got uh, projects that I have to do and you have to have a commitment to those projects. Those are the things that will determine how far you move ahead, how high you rise from where you are and you have to be committed to doing those things. There are many practices to help you with that. And uh, there's a link I shared with you that's going to open up a lot of that. I hope that you uh, take that list and actually read the resources that are there. A bunch of them are free. Um, another thing you do is you wait to be in the mood. Let me, let me change that. You wait to be in the right mood or the right time to tackle a task. Let me explain something to you in life. I'm going to explain something to you, and I hope that you really, truly listen to what I'm telling you. 
there's no such thing as the right time. There's no such thing as the right move. It's great to be in a good mood, but life requires you to be able to function and operate regardless of what mood you're in. Uh, I, I often, when, when dealing with my clients, I often deal with them through analogy in my own life to show them how I personally operate. And then I may talk about how other people move. But let me tell you something. Everything I do in life is based off of my commitment to it and not how I feel about it. Uh, I'll start with the most important thing in, in, in my world, my marriage. How I treat my wife has absolutely nothing to do with how I feel about my wife. This is the real world. We are real humans. We do things. There are times I'm looking at my wife and I'm not really feeling, you know, what she what she's doing or what she's saying. Nothing real crazy because we're in a real good space. We have a real good respect for one another and we really support one another. So but it's sometimes, you know, maybe she, you know, uh, wants to go do something I don't want to do. And, you know, we we, we don't agree on it, whatever. And I'm like, man, I'm going to go. But I don't really. But what I tell you is my, my mentality and behavior and how I handle her, even in that moment, is from a place of commitment and love. Now, I'm not talking about the romantic notion of love. I'm not talking about the moody, feely part of love. I'm talking about the love that says I'm committed to doing right by you no matter how I feel at the moment. So my entire behavior in my marriage, my entire behavior as the, the leader in my home is based on my commitment to be the person I promised to be, not how I feel. Because I tell you, those kids that have you feeling some kind of way, you'd be like, all of you pack your stuff, grab your crap, get on. I don't care how old you are. Kick it. Kick rocks. If it was about the feelings, because kids will take you there. It's not about the feelings with me. It's exactly about my commitment. It's the same thing when I show up in the office. There are things I'm looking at. Some days I show up in the office and I'm like, man, I don't feel like this crap. But I made a commit to my, commitment to myself. I'm going to show up and I'm going to put in the work. doesn't matter how I feel. What I found is that when I show up and I put in the work despite feeling some kind of way at any given moment, the more I work and the more I focus on my destiny and my commitment to being who I said I was going to be, the more that I find out that I start to feel better. My mood begins to change. Why? I'm operating in a place, in a position, a place and a position where I am functioning in what I'm designed and committed to do. That's something about fulfilling something that you have committed to that starts to raise your level of uh, existence, your, your, your state of existence, your vibration, your energy, your spiritual awareness, your connectivity to God or the, high, the higher source, all, the God Almighty. It, 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 it literally puts you in a place where you were designed to be. God designed the brain to respond to fulfillment. When I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, there's a mood shift. I don't care how bad it starts out. When I can look at it and say, man, you know what? I could have easily went off right there, but I showed patience. Why? Because I'm supposed to be patient. All of a sudden, what was anger or frustration turns into a sense of fulfillment. And now here comes this dopamine. You know, that's the body sensory of reward, the reward uh, for actually doing what you're supposed to. Do. That's a part of that feeling you get. But you have to be willing to do things when you don't feel like it. If you're waiting on the feeling, sometimes you'll never have it. Why? Because if you wake up and you're in a bad mood and you decide I'm not going to do anything, then you're already opened up to what comes in that particular state. And normally when you're in a low frequency, bad mood, you tend to attract low frequency, bad crap. And then the next thing you know, there's this cycle of just being upset, frustrated, angry, irritable. And you're, you're like, man, and, you, you, and you'll start to ask yourself, man, why am I like, what? how did I get here? It's because you didn't do the things that you knew you should have been doing because you didn't feel like it. There's no such thing as the perfect timing. The perfect timing or the right time is when it needs to be done. It's that simple. When you find out it needs to be done, do it. That's the perfect timing. That's when it needs to be done. The moment you determine it needs to be done is when you start the process of getting it done. Not, oh man, well, you know, maybe I'll do it this time. Man, man we love putting off things. It's a bunch of people right now who are going to at some point watch this video that are sitting up already talking about what they're going to do in January. Well, hell, what are you going to do the three months before then? 
what's going if it's so if it's important enough that you can put it on the calendar for three months down the line and it have magnitude with you you know nobody's putting minor tasks on a, a calendar for three months down the line nobody's saying i'm going to get some chips at the store in january so if i'm putting it on the calendar in january that means it has significance why am i not putting it on the calendar for tomorrow why am I not putting it on the calendar for later today? Why am I not saying by the end of this week, it'll be done? Procrastinating. Allowing distraction and inconvenience to rob you of important things that you need, to rob you of your destiny, to rob you of your future, to rob you of a bunch of different things. And... I really, really want uh, the chance to work with some of you guys to talk about some of the things that we can do. And I'm just looking at some of my notes. Some of the things that we need to do, you need to commit to the task. You need to promise yourself a reward. Oh, that works. Man, if I get this done on time, I'm going to go here. I'm going to take myself out here. I'm going to go there. And depending on how big uh, the task is, sometimes you say, man, look, man, I get this done on time. I'm going to Jamaica. I'm going to uh, Montego Bay, Negril. Uh, 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 Ultra Rios or you know San Juan or somewhere. I'm 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 gonna get out of and I'm gonna celebrate. And I mean it, I mean celebrate and celebrate hard for a short period of time. Celebrate getting something done. Give yourself a reason to look forward to finishing things. I tell people all the time. A lot of people don't celebrate themselves enough. That's why I get so monotonous. It's because you sitting up looking at this end goal of ninety days from now. What about all the steps you have to take to get to that 90 days? Why aren't they being celebrated? So if all I got is to look for something 90 days from now, it's going to be easy for me to get sidetracked. It's going to be easy for me to start looking around and go, man, I don't feel like this sucks. And then especially if it starts to look like I'm not going to hit it anyway. And then you start, man, then you become discouraged. Then you start looking at other things. And now you look up and you've got a whole cluster of things that are working against you when you should be taking action daily in incremental steps to get you to that goal. That's all it is. When you take a dream or a vision, an idea of something, and you put it on paper and you put a date next to it, it becomes a goal. When you take that goal and you break it down into small little increments, it becomes a plan. When you start to carry out the execution of that plan, it becomes operable and manifested and you start to see results. You've got to understand that sitting still and going around those things that you're uncomfortable with will not get you the things you want. Uh, act as you go. I've said that before. Acting as you go simply means that when it's when you see it, do it. Stop putting off stuff that, uh, I mean, who hasn't had parents that's going to say, why are you putting off for tomorrow what can be done today? Very wise. Stop putting off for tomorrow what can be done today. If it can be done today, do it today. First of all, tomorrow is not promised. Plus, tomorrow has its own challenges. So you're going to take today's challenges and tomorrow and double them down on tomorrow's challenges. Guess what's going to happen? Most of that stuff is going to get put pushed to what? No, Saturday's challenges. And now you got a nice little cycle that's going to be harder and harder to catch up. And the harder it gets to catch up on it, the more you're not going to want to do it. And just stuff that should be done never gets done. You can't achieve next level living doing that. You can't live life at the level of your design doing that. You're going to have to make a commitment to yourself to actually step out and start doing things that need to be done. Procrastination is ugly. It seems real simple. And, and, and people joke about it. But do you realize how much you get robbed of? Because every day has the potential to literally change. You're like, there's not a day that goes by that there isn't something in it that you can do that will change your life forever. Literally change your life forever. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here because I can talk about this. But go ahead, check out the link and read that, uh, read those resources and article. I think that it's a great lead. Uh, like I say, there's an opportunity to work with me once you read that. If you want to work with me, definitely uh, follow through on that. And I would love to sit down and have a 10 week uh, 
plan put in place to help you break the curse of procrastination uh it has to be done if you're ever going to really truly live life at the level of your design you can't be a procrastinator look i'm a, i'm i'm gonna get i'm gonna get off now uh, as I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Live your life on full every day. Go to bed uh, in the evening because you need to, because you need to recharge, because you spent everything that was meant for that day. You spent it on that day. And now you're going to go to bed and you're going to recharge. And you're going to get up and you're going to do it again. Give life everything you have you will be surprised at the returns you get. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Um, you guys have an unbelievable day.